Hey everyone, this is Gleb and after a short break, I'm back at teaching you how to test websites using Cypress. So in this example, I have a page that has a couple of placeholders, notice right here. And if we take the placeholder values as we are right now, and we type these placeholders into the form and click register, then it's successful form. So how would we grab the placeholder values from input elements and make sure the form works. If we look at the markup for the form, each placeholder like right here is an attribute or prop in this case as well. We can get each input element, grab the attribute, we get a value and then we can type it. So let's look at the first name. So we can get first name and as always, Right, I just keep saving and I see that it found the element. We can say invoke attribute placeholder. Okay, and then let's say it should be a string. And I like adding these assertions because they show value, they confirm it's a string. You can also confirm it's not empty string. And anytime we get something from the application, we use it inside a callback. So name, now we can grab the same input element and type name. Okay, so we typed Joey. We can do the same thing for the email. Again, we can copy and instead of a name, it has ID email and should be a string and the email should be typed. Okay, so we type name and the email just we need to type confirm your email so we can get the same logic right here and it has id c email and now the test is passing and you might say well it's kind of ugly right let's be honest because this pyramid of callbacks even if i have shown a bunch of ways of solving it it's still a little bit imperfect i want to say so we're gonna solve it as you might know, I have a plugin called Cypress Await. So let's install it. I'm going to open terminal right here and I'm going to install Cypress Await. And I'll show you a little secret. You probably are wondering how do I use Cypress Await. So here's what you can do. You can use my NPM, man PM utility. It's like man and NPM combination. And you can say, I'm interested in the readme from Cypress await package. And guess what happens? It finds the readme and it shows right in the terminal. Okay, so how do we install Cypress await? We can do the same thing. You can just say install and it will find the heading. And notice it just shows the section on installation. Now I know that I'm interested in the synchronous preprocessor. So this is how I would install Cypress await preprocessor. I'm going to copy this line into Cypress config and then inside setup node events, I'm going to process each spec file using the preprocessor from Cypress await. Okay, save it. Cypress reloads because the config file has changed and now it will use this Cypress await preprocessor when it loads. Okay, click on the spec. And right now everything works the same way, right? Because we haven't changed anything. So now we can take advantage of Cypress await syntax. And because it's a synchronous mode, it's very, very simple. Instead of getting the name into the callback, just say const name equals, and you get the name right there. Okay, the name will be the result of evaluating this chain of commands using all Cypress built-in assertions and retries and so on. Uh, email, just get it right here and use it afterwards. Okay, and we don't really have to invoke this um, uh, using sci invoke. We can say, okay, this input element should have attribute placeholder, and it will work the same way because have attribute have prop are uh, these assertions that actually change the subject and yield the value um, to the next command. Okay, 
So this is how I would write this test that looks at the form and enters the placeholders into the input fields. I showed how to write it using plain Cypress syntax and then how to use Cypress await preprocessor plugin to be able to say, give me the value from the page and then use that value in the subsequent commands. For more, check out Cypress await readme and the repo and open any issues that you encounter there.